Today's devotional is entitled, How We Fight Temptation. We are all creatures of habit. We all do the things the same way as it gives us comfort and normality in, in a world that's constantly changing. And that the habits we create give us some control over the things in our lives. And now think about your day. Uh, the things that you do for the most part are products of the habits that you've created. How you wake up, the first thing you do, to even the last thing of the day, we tend to do it the same. And boy, when we miss something, we feel completely off. Like part of our day has been taken away from us and we just really have this uneasy and just anxious spirit, just this weird feeling. Now see, habits are good to have and to form. And I would agree with uh, that probably 90% of the habits that you have are simple, innocent, and just a part of who you are. But some habits are bad. In fact, they are downright dangerous. And when we try to break these habits, we're completely all over the place. Our attitude, our attention, it's focused on this habit that we're trying to break. And finally, we just have to give in to this habit. And we'll feel better for a minute, but then these waves of guilt sweep over us. Why did we do this? Why did I give in? I'm just an absolute horrible, horrible person. Sin happens in all of our lives. And from the moment that Adam and Eve ate the fruit, we were separated by God or from God by sin. And so as we get closer to Christ and God, we try to shed our earthly selves and try to be more like them. Only to find these bad habits, these bad temptations that have a hold on us, pull us away from God. You see, temptation has an ability to give you some short-term enjoyment at the expense of long-term goals. Temptation is something that every single person goes through. And see, in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, Jesus is tempted and he tells us how we're to combat temptation in our lives and what we do when it creeps in and tries to take a hold of us. It says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and on their hands, they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him again, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all of this I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and only and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Now we see three times Jesus refute what the devil asks with scripture. And here we get three things that you and I can do when sin becomes so powerful that we can't refuse it. Number one, reading the Bible will help you fight the temptations of your life. Jesus said that we are to not just live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now, getting more than just a few Bible verses out of the Bible by studying and reflecting on what God has told us will help you fight these temptations. See, Deuteronomy 8 verse 3 says, And he humbled you, and he let you hunger and feed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that we might make you known that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Number two, when temptation comes, God is not testing you. When temptation comes our way, this isn't a test that the Lord is giving us because there is no sin in God. So he can't tempt us 
but it's our sinful nature that causes sin to creep in. And we see in James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15, let no one say when he is tempted, I'm being tempted by the God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he's allured and enticed by his own desires. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. It says here, each person is tempted by their own desires, not God's desires. Our own earthly desires is where sin comes from. And number three, when we worship and praise God, we naturally will turn away from temptation. You see, because there is no sin in God, when we worship and praise God, the very idea of sin and temptation is not there. For we cannot sin and worship God at the same time. When we are in his presence, we are filled with the fruits of the Spirit and we're pleasing to the Lord. You see in Colossians 1 verse 10, Paul says, So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. You see, the very idea that sin and God can be in the same sentence is, is, is not even possible. You can't be living with sin and still praising the Lord. But when we are in the presence of the Lord, those ideas, those sin, those sinful thoughts, those, those temptations become so easy to combat because we don't want anything to do with those because it takes us further away from worshiping our true father. Now, guys, we all succumb to temptation. Every single one of us does. Whether it be gossiping, lying, slandering, porn, we all suffer and we all fall short of the glory of God. But God, who is rich in mercy, loved us so much that even when we are dead to sin, he makes us alive in Christ. See, God made it possible for us to defeat the sins and temptations in our lives. It gives us an opportunity for Shoot! us to be able to Let's go, baby! not enjoy the sins, but be able to worship the Father. That know that the sin, that, that, that the Father's not tempting us, but he is giving us an opportunity to fight those temptations by reading the Bible. Psalms 51 uh, verse 10 through 12 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. See, guys, there's only been one person that's ever been able to defeat temptation. And that was Jesus. And he defeated it in the very face of Satan. It it's, gives us a perfect example of what we need to do in our lives when we are just ensnared with temptations and sin all the time. And yes, we can get caught up in the same sin over and over and over again. It happens. But God always gives you a way out. Getting into his word, fellowshipping with others, praying to the Father. You're going to be able to see ways out of those temptations and opportunities to step out of the darkness and into the light. Guys, that is our devotional for today how we fight temptation.